I'll be teaching you today how to do distance comparison um, using the sensor and operators of Xcode VR. And we're just going to get into that project. We're going to press Playground, Art Canvas, Playground. We're going to learn how to use the distance sensor to avoid walls, but um, it's also fun to just use um, the art canvas to, to, to draw the you know where, where our robot is going. So um, it's a nice blank canvas. Uh, that's all we have here and that's all we need. And well, I'll be hiding and expanding this code, uh, I mean this playground just so that we can um, see, see the code now and again. But basically our robot starts here and now I want to make it go forward until it sees this wall and then I'm going to make it um, stop for now. So how, how would I do that? Uh, of course, I can say drive forward for uh, you know some specific amount. Maybe it's a thousand. I'm not sure how many millimeters it'll take to get there. And I can try test this, and I can you know I can do this uh, several times until I figure out the right amount. Okay, a thousand looks like it's too much for this particular playground um, in this particular scale. So I can try uh, 500 maybe and run that again. And see how far I go with 500. One, two, oh, 500 is only here. I can see already also where Y shows me 500 is. So it's about halfway. So I wasn't too far. I'll try 900 um, uh, next time. Okay, and 900 will get me pretty much where I want. And we can see it's at 900, and it's just below the end, the edge of the uh, of of the art canvas. Okay, but that's, that's great, but uh, that's not really what I want to do. What I want to do is tell it to go forward and by itself decide when to stop. Um, if I want to do that, I can't use drive forward for a particular amount. Um, what I usually will use is just the co command to drive forward. And then I will have to put something to sense when to stop, and then at the end, after I, you know, after some time passed, so there should be something in between drive and stop, somewhere that would fit, you know, where the uh, shadow area is right now. I'll have to put uh, while my robot doesn't see a wall, continue or don't worry about it, wait until something else happens, and then at the end stop driving. Okay, so now I got to figure out what to put in between. Um, you know, all these um, things where you want to control some time to elapse um, until something happens are usually under the control menu. So we'll, we'll look under the control tab here and we can wait a ser several seconds, but that's not really what I want. I want to be able to see a wall. Um, I can tell it to do forever, then inside do different things like if I see the wall, drive forward, otherwise stop. But another cool thing to do is I can just tell my robot to start driving forward and then do nothing until some event happens, wait means, it doesn't mean the robot waits and stops, it means that the program waits, which, which means that it will do whatever the last thing you told it to do was. In this case, it was to drive. So it'll start driving forward, and then it won't do anything else, it won't stop, um, and it'll continue driving forward until some event happens. And what is that event? That event is when I sense the wall. And the best way to do that in VexCode VR is to use the distance sensing um, sensor. Uh, just to be clear about that, um, if I look at my robot um, from the front end view, uh, it's not the best, but uh, here's like my robot uh, from, from the front. These two sensors on the side are bumper sensors. Um, I don't care about those right now. Uh, for those, to, to, to sense those, you actually have to hit the wall first. And I don't really want to touch the wall in this case. I want to stop when my distance sensor, which is sort of like a laser guide, it points one beam of light directly forward towards the wall. And um, when, you know, it measures the time it takes the beam of light to go to the wall and come back. And based on the, you know, time that it, uh, the flight time uh, uh, of that beam and how fast you know, light travels, uh, it will it will know, um, uh, you know, how far it went. Um, and it will be able to measure distance. So the faster it gets back a, a light ping, 
uh, which is sort of like radar but without sound instead of with, with light. Uh, the faster it gets back a response, um, the, the closer it is. And it has some calculation that it does inside to give you back exactly how far away things are uh, and exactly things that are in front of this sensor. Okay, so um, we, can, we can use that. And the way to use that is you go to sensing and you pull out this distance. Now you can say, if my distance sen sensor found an object, we can do that. Uh, let's see how that works, just to get a clear sense. So all I did was I pulled, uh, so first I went to distance sensing, and I saw that there are uh, two of these sensors. Uh, one is uh, distance found an object, uh, sorry, sensor blocks. One of them is distance sensor found an object, uh, which will return either true or false. Another one is the distance itself, the distance that returned from the sensor. We will end up using this one, but uh, for now we can use also distance found object. So I've just started my code and I see that nothing happens. And that must be because distance must have found an object. So uh, another way to see that, by the way, is if you look at um, the sensors, it shows me, yeah, you know, there's something uh, within 945 millimeters in front of me. So that's why I'm not moving because I've already seen the object. Um, so uh, that's why distance found object is not great. It, it's only useful if, um, if, you're, if your object is more than, you know, basically uh, it's, it's useful for some map like, um, like the castle crasher map. So in the castle crasher map, just to be clear, why, why is there a distance found object block at all like this? So in the castle crasher map, which we're not using, um, you know, uh, when you're staring in front of uh, uh, a castle, then you can see that there's a distance and distance found object would be true, this, this block that I've been using. But if I turn my robot, um, let's say if I turn my robot uh, to the right for you know, maybe 30 degrees. And I run this program. Okay, uh, I still see maybe this, this thing is in front of me and it's uh, 1,595 millimeters away. It's still probably found an object because it sees something there. Let me try another 30 degrees. I'll turn, turn 30 degrees and then I'll turn another 30 degrees. Okay, and now I see the distance is greater than 3,000 millimeters. And when I see that, that's because there's nothing in line of sight. Okay, uh, if you remember, these red things are not walls, they're just space. So, um, you know, there's nothing in front of me. Uh, I don't see this because my sensor is pointing somewhere in this distance. So because of that, whenever you see greater than 3,000 millimeters here from, for your distance sensor, your found object will also say, um, you know, no, there's nothing in front of me. So for instance, if I do that now, again, drive forward until you see something in front of you, then stop driving. If I do that now, it'll probably start moving forward and it'll never see something in front of it, so it'll fall off the table. So you might want to use distance found object in the uh, castle area, but you don't really want to use it anywhere where there's a, a wall around you. Okay, um, so it's not useful for art canvas. It won't be useful for a maze, for instance. Okay, <clears throat> let's go back to the art canvas now that we understand why we don't want to use this distance found object, uh, but we at least understand why you would use it. Okay, and now we, we still have to figure out when to stop. So uh, let's, let's run our program moving forward and let's look at the distance here and kind of figure out how far do we want to be from the wall um, when we stop. Uh, maybe right about, maybe just before this, maybe when the distance is uh, around 50 millimeters, okay? 25 looks a little bit too far already. Um, do that again, maybe try to stop it faster. Okay, maybe 70 even, 70 looks like a legitimate distance to, to test for and whenever the robot uh, sees a distance from the sensor less than 70, that means it's really close to a wall, let's stop. Okay, so now that we know that we want to stop whenever we see the distance is less than 70 millimeters, 
we can add uh, wait until distance is less than 70 millimeters so how do I do that there's an operator um, called the less than operator and it's over here and I'm going to drag this one out notice the 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 left less than sign um, it's a sort of a triangle with one corner and uh, 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 sort of an isosceles without a base and the uh, one corner that you see uh, or uh, is um, pointing to the left uh, as opposed to this one which is the greater than sign okay we can uh, we can use this if we do wait until it's not greater than 70 but we don't want to do that we want to do when it's less than 70 also we don't want to use equal to 70 because in case you know our, our robot is not always always perfectly hundred uh, percent measuring things every you know milli nanosecond so just in case we're driving very fast and uh, you know we we passed 70 but we see already 69 we still want it to pass uh, and to stop so we don't want to say distance is 70 and uh, you know we let's say we wake up and there's something in front of us that's 50 millimeters away we don't want it to keep moving just because we're not saying 70 any number between 0 and 70 we want to stop so any number that's less than 70 will make this uh, wait move on to the next bit which will uh, which will execute stop driving and then our robot will stop hopefully okay so uh, now that we you can see that the wait until looks for something of the shape of this um, sort of like a rhombus with a rectangle in the middle of it um, uh, or triangle rhombus uh, triangle rectangle triangle um, so this is this is the shape that fits inside those shapes are booleans that means you know the the return from this is either true or false either it, it, it either this thing uh, co is correct or it's not correct um, and when it is correct something will happen which is it will exit this weight okay and there will be other things like uh, an if statement right an if statement also looks for something that is or isn't true at the time okay so uh, let's test this um, now we want to drive forward wait until our dest distance sensor says we're less than 70 and then stop driving and see if that works mm, moving forward less than 70 boom so we see it didn't stop exactly at 70 because when we stop driving there's still a little bit of momentum and maybe we're driving fast and we, the sensor only noticed it at 65 millimeters and then it by the time it stopped it was already five millimeters fur further um, so that that's you can expect you know some uh, momentum to happen in your in your robot in real life as well so that's fine um, but you, we can see we're stopping short of the wall and that's great if we wanted to maybe stop at exactly 70 we can try to make the sensor see it at 80 and see if that helps um, but we can't really expect to always be 100 percent exactly where um, where we where we would have wanted um, you know the robot to be but it looks like in this case there's always a 10 millimeter um, uh, momentum forward lurch between uh, seeing um, the distance and stopping so we can use that as a as sort of a gauge but don't expect always a, a 10, 10 millimeters especially not in real life so now that we have everything uh, we need for this uh, why don't you try the same thing yourselves and then maybe you can experiment doing other things like instead of stopping to drive um, get the robot to uh, turn away from the wall okay so I've given you the basic elements for how to use um, distance sensor to detect the wall and I think from there you could pretty much create your own vacuum cleaner um, you instead of stopping with this algorithm you you tell it to turn away from the wall maybe in this direction maybe in this direction um, and then you just keep repeating that once you turn away you can go back to drive and then uh, drive forward until you see another wall and then when you see this wall you can uh, turn away from that wall uh, maybe turn this direction or this direction or this direction you that's the part that you need to figure out is um, you know how to turn away from the wall so that uh, every time you move forward, you hit the wall, you turn away from it, hit, move forward, hit the wall. 
Okay, so why don't you give that a try now and uh, see if you can put this into a loop and um, make, it, make it behave in that way. And again, if you can't figure out how to do that, just go to the next video and I will show you the next step of the way.